so I'm still a big advocate for the barriers work. I think, to, in my mind, it is it's the most resolutionally concise wording possible under all these things while still getting to the heart of the cooperation literature. I think I started kind of from the basis of if the what is the core ground in the world of China? And I think that the Wolf Amendment is sort of the core ground for that. And any AF that would repeal the Wolf Amendment would lead to lots of cooperation. So if you look at that as kind of the baseline of what cooperation looks like or what would have to be done with China, I kind of developed that out as the potential for the resolution, all, all these other barriers to international space cooperation, like uh, ITAR, export controls, and things like that. Uh, the most recent RD-180 ban on Russian rockets, uh, all of which create a legal or regulatory barrier to international space cooperation that forces the AF to make a change from the status quo that has unique disads too, because it's an actual change in our cooperation or technology transfers. Uh, so I, I sort of think that there's at least a balanced AF neg ground. I included a lot of the cards that Miles cut from the RD-180 uh, issue yesterday. I think that there's a decent literature base there. It's still kind of evolving since the Department of Defense announced they're no longer going to be buying them. Uh, we did ban them in 2014, and then we unbanned them again in 2015 uh, with the phase out of 2022. Uh, the most recent ruling is the DOD will phase them out by 2022. NAS, and then they sort of left that up to what NASA is going to end up doing uh, on their own in terms of rockets. Uh, the China stuff, I thought the, I included the Wolf Amendment because I think that that's core. I ended up coming across this interesting uh, kind of take this Ronci card. It's this, from this master's thesis uh, last night that's kind of like nobody actually cares in the international community about the Wolf Amendment. It says it's simply not discussed when within the international policymaking proceedings. Uh, this is largely because when it comes to the U.S.-China relationship, ITAR poses a far more immediate concern uh, to those right uh, to the cooperation between the two countries um, for expertise. It also kind of indicates that ITAR's strict restrictions on everything applies to all of these other countries around the, around the world because any component uh, that is made in the United States is and exported abroad that is then used in whatever, whatever satellite design, whatever they use uh, for space can no longer be exported without being subjected to ITAR restrictions. Uh, so I think that there's a literature base for a lot of those things there. Um, I included some India things uh, like the PSLV rockets. Uh, I don't think that those are like substantial enough that uh, cooperation on other issues or things like that would change, uh, would be able to beat the unilateral counter plan, would it be able to beat cooperate on something else. So I don't think that it has to be like we have to specifically write out India in a resolution. Did you say something, Herndon? Okay. Um, ITAR, I included a lot of like what what this stuff would sort of look like. Um, it's the International Traffic and Arms Regulations. Uh, there's lots of literature about how it undermines U.S. space competitiveness because we can't actually sell anything. Uh, and there's this random article from last year about how like the perception of ITAR undermines the U.S. domestic space spending, uh, which might be an advantage. I think then there's this Burns card that's like ITAR prohibits our, uh, provo provides barriers to paving our way to Mars, which means that there's literature there. Um, a lot of the core literature is about whether or not how much those should be relaxed uh, and where that point is. I don't think anybody advocates for just getting rid of all of ITAR regulations or export regulations. There's just like distinctions about how that reform should be done, which provides counterplan ground, provides AF advantages. I also ran into this interesting article from February about the ITAR and just like U.S. space cooperation with Vietnam, which I thought was somewhat interesting. So I threw it in uh, as like a potential AF area. Although I think that this article does a fairly good job of discussing kind of the benefits, which it might give us information on what China's doing, but it also provides the same kind of disads uh, to like giving Vietnam control over those satellites means that we could be locked out of, of whatever space capabilities we share with them, uh, things like that. If you really wanted to get to the Iran-North Korea debate, you could because ITAR restricts exports depending upon the destination, particularly with Iran-North Korea. Uh, same export control regulations restrict Iran, China, Sudan, and I think one other country. I just don't think like 
you have to write those out of a resolution because I don't think apps would be large enough uh, to have to worry about. Uh, satellite and space technology would definitely be an app. Specific things like microprocessors would probably fall into topical versions of the apps. I also found like this high skilled worker shortage kind of thing that like uh, that SpaceX would like to hire foreign nationals, but ITAR prohibits them from hiring, that requires them to hire only US persons uh, to work for NASA or private companies. I just don't think that that is a large enough app either because the article goes on to say that literally nobody in the space industry is lobbying for changes to its worker problem. Um, so I think that that's just kind of like it's there as something that might possibly be discussed, which is why I thought it was relevant to include, but I, I don't think that it's an actual app. And then there's a bunch of other like marginal restrictions that sort of do a lot of the same thing. So why, what net ground does this guarantee us if we were to put a version of this resolution on? I think it guarantees all of the same ground that we've already been talking about. So I think it guarantees like the tech transfer is bad, the loosening regulations, uh, opens us up to IP theft. It opens us up to like loss of military advantages. I think that it, the China cooperation stuff opens up the same kind of any generic China app, which is just like we cooperate with China, it trades off with our relations here, here, and here. Uh, I think that changing restrictions to any other small country sort of does the same thing because it's broad restrictions based on tech transfers that those disads are built in. The, the reason why we don't allow those tech transfers now or have a process for reviewing tech transfers is to protect the US military industry, which locks in that as a core disad. There is like some discussion about how much India would actually be involved uh, in export restrictions because India is classified as like a tier one country uh, because they're a part of the three of the four uh, international uh, export kind of treaties, which means that I don't think that it would be, India would not be a, an AF really under this type of proposed wording. You might get an Iran AF, I suppose, because they're, they're also one of the ones that are, are restricted from tech transfers for lots of reasons. So my concern in kind of trying to vet this stuff was that uh, bear, the, and I, I didn't look at restrictions as a term, which sure. I are we like legally bound to always have restrictions on like resolution? Maybe, uh, but the barrier stuff, I either feel that barrier, like just barriers, is not a limiting term because obviously yeah. people say things are barriers to cooperation. But that legal barriers is then too limiting. I would say legal or regulatory. I, I started looking up this this earlier this afternoon. Okay. Legal and re, legal and or regulatory barriers to cooperation. Okay. Well, I didn't. I haven't done like I haven't submitted any of that stuff yet. I think that that needs a lot more vetting yeah. as the phrase. But like the problem with restrictions is that all of the none of the literature really uses like restriction it uses it's a barrier for u.s co cooperation we're still able to cooperate in xyz way but we can't cooperate the ways that we would like to cooperate or have in-depth cooperation because of barriers is there a card that defines the barriers there is not at the moment I, I oh jackie sent them out i sent them to you oh she sent them to me yeah. okay because my concern i haven't seen that yet is that just like legal barrier without a definition to be any law legal? that has some yeah effect on cooperation not even expressly or with an intent the cards that i found said that it could be anything yeah, could yeah i mean it could yeah. it could definitely That's be definitely it like could it like could definitely be a lot of things but i think that adding like international space cooperation limits all of but the trade war is definitely a legal yeah. barrier yeah to space cooperation. the card like legal barrier cards specifically say that patents would be any trade based things would be I'm a little nervous. Sorry, I jumped in late, but the cards that I found said that there is no term of art around legal barrier. And yeah, I mean, it's definitely not like a is. defined term. I just, I don't think those apps do space cooperation or are limited to space cooperation, which makes them susceptible to just do that, don't do the space port pick. No, I, I, well. Which makes those not apps. Part. That is the app. It's like, no trade war anymore. That is a barrier to doing yeah. space co-op. That's the plan. But no space co-op can still still occur because of ITAR and all of these uh, the Wolf but Amendment, etc. So which means that all the legal barriers? I think you have to remove barriers to space cooperation, removing the tr rem remo removing tariffs 
It doesn't increase space cooperation. But that's not Nobody, I have not seen a single card that says removing trade re, or like removing tariffs increases tr space. But it doesn't have to okay. increase space. Is there a second floor? It could be a barrier yeah. to entry. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Are you saying that there's a second floor that's like remove a barrier and do something with this space cooperation in addition, or we're just remove a barrier to space cooperation? I think that you know, so it's just a barrier to space cooperation. Sure, I think that you could probably write the resolution in a way that fixes that concern. I guess the only thing I'm thinking is just, I know the, <laughs> we want to remain kind of truthful to language literature, but those legal barriers are legal restrictions. Legal restrictions are inherently legal barriers, but it's a much smaller subset that limits that trade and things like that. Like if we put legal restrictions for resolution, do you think any of those solvency advocates would not work? Like is there something that goes beyond the restriction that constitutes a barrier? Or? Not that I have seen. I mean, like there are there are things to generic barriers. That there's like the U.S. U.S. domestic space program, and our focus on like SpaceX is a barrier to our international cooperation because we're not focusing on international cooperation. Which is why I think if if it's written as a legal or regulatory barrier to international space cooperation, what I just think it fixes those apps. On instead of to, so legal restriction on space cooperation. I think that, that avoids maybe a lot of the problems. Of that would probably fix it. War app. It's a more restrictive, for sure. But I, I, like Rubai said, I don't think any of these asks would not meet that. That would meet legal barrier. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we, have san we have sanctions on the head of Ross Cosmos. Yeah, I don't think that solves because entry bar barriers to entry is a subset of legal barrier, and any of those would be considered a barrier to entry. If but that would makes they sense. Also be so on a legal restriction yeah. on. Well, if it's a entry barrier for any market, you could say it would be on the market. Yeah. So I mean, it's still big, I think, for yeah. sure. But it's not. There's not like any, any mm -hmm. law that's it's got some. Form yeah, it's order better. I just don't know. If it's it's topical. Yeah, I read the cards pretty closely and have a couple of thoughts. One is I don't know why the fiat wand doesn't accomplish this. So if we say the U.S. should do satellite co-op with China, be able to auto-wave or get around the ITAR restrictions. Uh, second is, I haven't seen anything, like on the ITAR list means the Department of State has to approve the transfer. So wait, and some of the cards describe that as a waiver process. Uh, I don't know what the procedures for that are or how many projects that is blocked, which would you know be indicative oh, wow. of what, well, yeah, but there, where's the list, right? That's the, that's the list of what uh, the apps should be. Uh, and then, I, I don't know, this also seems to implicate, like some of the cards when they're talking about, your, like the Burns cards that you have say it's a barrier, but then it hinders collaboration and then doesn't list like what that collaboration is. But the other thing is, is like this is more focused on, or a lot of it is focused on what, for example, US, like what uh, Lockheed uh, or TRW or whatever, can, or Honeywell, excuse me, uh, what types of components they can sell. And so it's a lot, like the international cooperation is cooperation between U.S. aerospace companies wanting to sell satellites either to the government of Vietnam or to uh, China or to an uh, Indian uh, telecom company. And I don't know if that, I don't know if there's a way to limit that out or if that fits into what people think of as uh, international cooperation when they vote for the topic. I don't know. Those are, those are three considerations that I have. I just think space limits that. Or like the modifier space limits the telecom stuff. I mean, we do telecom in space. Well, right. But, <laughs> I mean, like, that's that's the satellite development right. that I think right. and they're most people think of. Sure. Right. So, it, right, let, let, let me ask it this way. Is it topical for an affirmative to say we remove the barrier that prevents Honeywell from selling this particular satellite to... Uh, the Vietnamese national uh, telecommunications. I don't think that'd be a significant decrease in barriers. Okay. But, but is that the type of transaction that your topic I mean, would the, allow? The, if, if it was broadly okay. of like that satellite technology, I think that that's a core discussion of U.S. cooperation with other countries and satellites. Our term of limitation there is significantly. We'd have, to, we'd have to figure out a term, but yes, at the moment, yeah. For me, at least, I kind of like this theme, but I feel, I mean, maybe this is just what Michaela was saying, like we've had a lot of topics like this before, but just, I think I'd be a lot more on board for substantially reduce this legal restrictions to, you know, I think that to me seems smaller and more well-defined and gets towards the heart of local government, a lot of the stuff that blocks cooperation with Russia, 
potentially some of the stuff that blocks cooperation with Iran and North Korea? I just have not found a card. So my concern with restrictions is I just haven't found a card that says legal restrictions in the context of space as like one defining term. Well, we haven't found that on legal barriers either. Yeah, I'm a lot. We haven't found like we, barriers is a lot in there in conjunction with space. So restrictions is less so with space. Mind, sort of like global issues with it, if we will. Yeah. Or I mean, barriers. I, I'm not sure when in the past when we've looked for sort of a floor, which is how I'm characterizing this, it's because that floor locked in neck ground. And your answer to that floor was that it got us all the same sort of neck ground. Well, no. It, got, we'll do, yeah, go ahead. It, lo it locks in the technology transfer disad of undermines U.S. military co-op or Which like I think military is advantage. What DCH is saying is fiat requires anyway, mm -hmm. right? Am I like so, the AF could just be the AF under the other resolutions could just be waivers. Like so, in theory, in a China resolution and only a China resolution, it doesn't have to get rid of the Wolf Amendment. They could just FBI could approve whatever the plan is with 90 days notice because that's all the Wolf Amendment does. Is it requires. NASA to submit a proposal to Congress that then gets approval from Congress for that, which means that the Wolf Amendment can still exist under a generic China resolution. And AFs don't have to get rid of that amendment. The, I think the core... But the Wolf Amendment isn't a legal barrier. It's just a it, legal restriction. Because it doesn't bar cooperation. It just makes... Right, that's why I think barriers and or restrictions, which... A barrier doesn't have to, the, besides the cards that I found that said it's not a term of art, the ones that did attempt to define it said that it doesn't have to prohibit, it needs to just be an obstacle. Right. So, which is, was my worry, but at the same time, if the intent is to make the floor a legal wolf, obstacle, why don't we just say those I, floors? I think legal barrier like lowers the floor. Yeah. I think it actually yeah. makes it much easier to do less on the app. Right. And even if it's not less mm -hmm. different, which is still bad for the neg if it's we've got things that are coming way out of left field even if some random person on the internet says that it makes space co op harder and i could be wrong but when i was playing around looking at digital stuff before there are some people who say we should remove some of the very few export restrictions we have for technology does them and i just don't know how to deal with that why don't we just say export yeah. controls i'm wondering about that you i mean you could you could say itar export controls in the res sure that's one way to do it I mean, wolf amendment does export controls not capture Everything that you're trying to do. Uh, like I don't know if it captures all of the Wolf Amendment things. I think I speak for a majority of the topic committee when I'd say that we would want to see definitions. Yeah, I want yeah. T cards. Yeah, T card. So th I only said number one. Number one was I'm not yeah. sure the floor. Number, number two was like I think space co-op solves all of the things you said about like it solves the issue. So DCH is like fiat thing maybe, and if it doesn't, I'm not sure why not. And then T cards, like if we want to put a barrier or a restriction or anything like that in the resolution, it would be nice to be like, because here are some cards that say that. Um, there's like what is seven. I mean, I don't know. I do think there's something to be said for. I guess I, I keep thinking of this as a floor in a larger resolution that says something like national space policy to increase international cooperation, including at least this sort of thing, because I think that does provide some stable ground that you're going to have to li lift some yeah. restrictions on technology or something like that. Yeah. But you still have to do something big with national space policy, like Dinger said, and it has to be... Inter My worry is that we didn't find any limiting definitions of international cooperation. No. It's like when you said, well, cooperation slash fiat means you do get this link. I'm not sure you do. Like I feel yeah. like this at least gives us an instance of cooperation that they have to do that gets us some neg ground that we wouldn't be guaranteed to have otherwise. Yeah, I was going to add to that and say, potentially, I was making a joke to Miles that gravity is the largest barrier to space cooperation. <laughs> um, and so I think the idea of the having to remove a restriction requires no. okay. action by the government. <laughs> okay. um, now, what I, I agree with you. That doesn't guarantee that it's a negative ground other than like government action bad or something. But, right. but yeah. Um, that's sort of what I was envisioning on the floor as well. Um, cause the last thing that I had written down it was exactly that. I do think it would need, I would want a ceiling with it. Can I just sure. say that the reducing barriers or whatever export controls, sure. that means that the private industry counter, or disadvantage and counter plan are not core negative ground anymore. Because you basically said SpaceX can sell to China, Russia, etc. 
versus cooperation where if you can't fiat, I mean, that, that gets into a question whether or not you can fiat through the barriers, but if you say, oh, we're going to use India satellites, we're going to use Russia, et cetera, then that, the trade-off is the domestic commercial industry. And so, um, you know, whether people want that to be core negative ground, whether it's necessary, I'm just throwing it out there that reducing barriers would allow uh, the app to kind of get out of that and potentially even make arguments that they help the industry. I was going right. to weigh on this earlier, but one of the better affirmatives that we should be debating is the U.S.'s need to establish some international rules with regard to commercial space. Uh, the evidence is really good. The U.S. passed this domestic law, and the literature is really good that I've been reading the last 24 hours that said the problem is nobody else has really the entrepreneurial side of space that the U.S. does, and inevitably there's going to be conflicts, and now is the time for the U.S. to lay down the law for that. So I do think that's valuable affirmative ground. It doesn't necessarily prevent the counter plan of just have privates do stuff, especially against apps that are more about space good as opposed to international co-op good. One thing about that though is there is a lot of ground for not just like, it's not, the problem isn't just that actors aren't acting. There is a question of like who is supposed to be acting and how that creates for that. Like self-regulation, there are disads to it besides it's not being done right now. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm saying yeah, the counter plan. Like the, I don't think that what I just said. I don't think gets rid of that counter plan, especially against apps that just want to say space good, like have have privates do space. Um, but I I don't want us to like I I think it is both counter plan and I think there is a really good affirmative that we should be talking about, which is the outer space treaty is being interpreted about whether whether it should be interpreted the same way the law of the sea has been interpreted. Is that you can't do pro, uh, individual exploitation of resources. And so a lot of people are like, no, that's not what the Outer Space Treaty was supposed to do. Yes, it was, but we need to clarify and all that sort of stuff. Um, so I wouldn't want us to have a resolution that made us think that wasn't a good app ground. Because um, I think that's, like if we're, if we're trying to debate what well, the I mean, yeah, I think there might be difference between saying, like, do the norms for commercial space versus say, like, sell to whomever you want. There could still be arguments about why the commercial space industry doesn't want it to be multilateral with Russia or China, et cetera, et cetera. That they're they're better off just saying, "Hey, we own everything we put up there," because I believe that's our law, mm -hmm. right? Versus trying to cooperate. So in theory, that could still be a disad to mm -hmm. that yeah, norm. Yeah, yeah, like well, right? I think that so they're I'm not saying that the app can't talk about commercial stuff, but this would definitely allow them to claim that they help the domestic commercial because. But but the counter plan of just NASA buys more stuff from the commercial industry solves the, those core advantages with the disad being to cooperation, which makes those apps not that big of a deal. Right? If the advantage, if your app is just like, we should allow SpaceX to sell this one thing so SpaceX gets better, the government could just buy more stuff from SpaceX to solve that advantage and then re to yeah. SpaceX cooperation with China. Okay, but, so, but the thing is that right now in theory, the private sector, the domestic private industry disad is negative ground. Yes, you're right. It might not be app. I mean, like saying, I don't think it's saying that the app doesn't get the advantage. Doesn't mean it's still a disadvantage by taking away the disadvantage, right? It, sure. Your your basic argument is that then the disads are cooperation or the nature of cooperation, which right. is getting rid of the exploitation. It it focuses on what I think the topic is, which is cooperation. Throw it out. Yeah. <laughs> Can I hear an outline of what the neg ground privatization DA says? Yeah, I cut some cards in the, the disad. It basically says that, I mean, it begs the question of whether or not you could fiat away these barriers, but if they're, you don't get rid of that. What is the link? The is link the is that cooperating with other countries means that we don't have the resources. A, we don't have the resources and it trades off with our own domestic industry. B, why, that. Why? This is what I'm not, I guess yeah. I can see lots of apps having lots of different effects on private industry in both positive and negative ways, and so I guess I'm, I'm wondering if I've been thinking about this dissent differently, so what, can you tell me how is it that it hurts, how does cooperation, how does lifting these export controls hurt our domestic industry, and what part of it? Because when we cooperate industry? on, say, like the space station, and... You know, Russia's doing part, then our, we don't make these projects with the commercial industry. The evidence says countries pursuing cooperation with foreign governments risk reducing opportunities for partnership with their own domestic space industry. Commer co commercial service providers may feel slated or compelled to turn elsewhere. If it's like government to government co-op, then 
like we sign a contract with SpaceX. We we buy we buy Russia's seats to the ISS instead of SpaceX's seats to ISS. Okay, it just seems like though. I mean, there are like IP theft protections and things like that. So like letting some of our technology go to other people could hurt our industry that way. Like that's I just. The idea that there is a monolithic privatization of this ed was something that I feel like we've just been assuming there was, but I'm not sure there necessarily is. Also, I do think the app is allowed to term it. Uh, I think everybody's probably okay with that. Um, so I guess I just, I, I'm not saying, obviously, yes, the paper said privatization was a DA. The paper said a lot of things, okay? And I, it frustrates me sometimes when we kind of announced that like because one thing was in the paper that's like the thing that we all have to abide by and I just wanted to make sure that we were at least mm -hmm. giving some consideration that there may be variables to some of the link arguments about these things plus like I said I mean some of us may be having different perceptions of what the NISAD is so I'm not no. trying to be a jerk I'm just trying no, to I mean I get that, that and I mean I'm not saying this needs to be I'm just saying that it's a consideration to take into account um, when we talk about reducing barriers to tech, because then that in many ways really becomes uh, corporate cooperation with other kinds. Of, that's the difference between civil and corporate and military cooperation of the wording paper that it is. And this is basically corporate cooperation. Um, and if we're cool with that, that's fine. But if the uh, if the resolution does what Adrian was hinting at earlier about. Nick's work is a clause within, then it seems like the plan might help some corporations out by reducing the barrier, but the other thing that it has to do about increasing international cooperation could potentially still give you a link, that particularly? I would think the app would be on the, the better side there in terms yeah. of evidence. But yeah, I mean, in theory, yes, you could mm -hmm. say that. Like the, in other words, the counter plan to just remove the barrier but not do what the rest of the plan has to do, I guess, is what I was wondering about. Potentially. No. But I mean, yeah, I mean, no. I, you know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I just, before we move on, I'm hearing that if remove barrier needs to happen, we need more definitions and evidence for inclusion. It'd be nice to know what, what form of a ceiling it could be combined with. Do you need more than the doc I got and submitted a little later? Uh, I don't think I still need more than that. Adrian. Adrian put it on. Oh, she did. Like, no. You did a great thing. Could we fold in that, like, more cards, like, maybe explore some other options that we yeah. have, like, legal restrictions? Oh, there is. Yeah. I think something more limiting than legal barrier would be legal barrier to entry. And that just is the market based action. And there's some definitions of that included. Regulations well. might be another word. Okay. Um, I'd like to move on to uh, militarization resolution proposals. Those were on the agenda. Yeah. Yeah. We got a couple. Of Dragon Force parts. Yeah. Um, there's, there's no real good advocates for cooperation to increase weaponization. I'm sure you're all surprised. Um, so I, I, I will move to scratch that. <laughs> I can send out what I found. It's no. not inspiring. We're good. Okay. okay. <laughs> I, for one, am proud of you. I mean, there is some stuff that talks about increasing militarization, especially like the SSA and things like that with our allies, but actually putting weapons in space, there's just not evidence for that. Um, just to be clear about the distinction. Okay. You search prior and binding consultation with data with books. Wait, we got militarization the other way, though. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Like, if we want to talk about militarization at all, um, we don't have to. Um, but it could be part of different resolutions, et cetera. So that's the, it's under militarization work, although weaponization oh, is right. probably the preferred phrase. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so this is more like kind of anti-militarization uh, efforts. So this is, these are wording options um, that are explored in the event that we de decide to specify particular areas. 
Um, so the United States federal government um, should, you know, increase uh, international space cooperation on the People's Republic of China in one or more of the following, um, you know, on space arms control, um, and on arms control for space weaponization, or on arms control for the weaponization of outer space. They're kind of like the three terms, uh, it was rather, rather three phrases um, that we came up with. Um, and I would say, I guess, backing up just a little bit, uh, this this paper here does not include like the weaponization good, weaponization bad debate. Um, we should do that. That's all included in like other various parts of it, um, and we've kind of gone through that. I do think that the weaponization kind of like good bad debate, and then like um, U.S. involvement, um, and whether or not there's a treaty process or soft law, etc., um, is all useful as well. And that's some of that I've got in like I lost paper, but this is more like wording options here. Um, so the reason the way we went with arms control. Um, is that there is a debate about what arms control means, um, but that it seems like even the least version of arms control includes strong cooperative elements. So you can't do unilateral arms control. Yeah. So that's nice. Um, <laughs> uh, so it would require interaction with and negotiation with um, our other right, um, elements of the, the topic. So if it was China, Russia, um, Iran, you know, what have you, um, we would engage with that. So it can't just be disarmament. You can't just like unilaterally get rid of space weapons, which is kind of like the core counter plan on the space area. I, I, I thought preserving that area was really important. Um, so the different wording options, the reason that I have the, the middle one recommended rather than space arms control um, is that space arms control could potentially include kind of like simple dialogue um, on a variety of different weapons systems that aren't necessarily what we would kind of classically assume as space weapons, right? Space weaponization or space weapons, but could just be about the militarization of space. So it's important to know the distinction between militarization and weaponization, whereas militarization is like the deployment of satellites that support our general military efforts and have been proceeding at pace for, you know, quite some time, since the 1950s. Um, 1960s. So space is thoroughly militarized, but has not yet been weaponized, was supporting the, some of this stuff. Um, there is some disagreement, some healthy disagreement, about what constitutes arms control. Um, basically, the debate is whether or not arms control requires um, that it be kind of like hard law or it could be more soft law um, about the object of the arms control. So, right. So we can either, so, the, so there will be topicality debates if we use the term arms control or phrase arms control. There will be T debates about whether or not um, the app has to be, you know, a treaty or whether it could be something else that's less than a treaty, um, like a kind of informal agreement, um, something like that, right? More cooperative agreement. Um, I think those debates would be good. I think they'd be fine. Um, there are cards in the context of um, space, right? So there's like the Gubrid evidence um, about that it requires controls on military capability. He's kind of re uh, responding to Crepon um, on defining arms control. So there's like, there are debates about definitions of arms control in the context of um, space weapons. So that's kind of nice. Um, the evidence, at least for the T debates, would be good. Um, and like here it says, right, you know, um, they're opposed to actual arms control and they suggest milder formulations such as codes of conduct as a substitute. Um, these do not actually address the control of weapons, right? Um, they do not substitute for measures which actually just ban or limit the control of arms. So you've got to be like a, a stronger control. Um, you can't just be a code of conduct, etc. cetera. Um, although apps could try to be a code of conduct and have tea debates. So um, I guess so there's sort of like two questions related to weaponization, um, militarization. The first is whether or not we think that it's a valuable area um, to explore. I guess I think in terms of thinking through international cooperation. Um, it seems like that's somewhat of a prerequisite, at least. Like the United States and China disagree quite a bit on the future of uh, weapons in space. Russia and China have promoted um, the PPWT, which is this proposal to limit um, the weaponization of space. And I've got some stuff for like the, the ILA component of the, the topic, if, if that's a possibility. Um, but it's, it's, it's a healthy controversy, at least. The United States is sort of pro uh, unilateral slash no controls on weaponization of space. We've not really entered into any agreements with any other countries that would control our weapons. Um, yeah, so it's like US is taking essentially no action on space weapons in a multilateral sense. 
um, we're reserving the possibility for unilateral deployment in the status quo. Um, it would certainly be an area of um, cooperation that would be like a, a way to move forward. And the unilateral counter plan, that's, that's one thing that I was thinking though, um, is preserving the possibility of kind of like unilateral action. And that's why arms control is the preferred term, is that the counter plan to simply announce, say, a moratorium on the development of space weapons, um, on development and testing, would be a competitive counter plan. Um, but if you use the wrong phrase, then it's not a competitive counter well, plan. So, so. so look at it, so this Cho card, mm -hmm. this Cho 18 card. I think arms control is just in there in of itself opens up the topic pretty broadly because it says arms control includes both multilaterally legal legally binding measures and voluntary measures examples of the former are treaties examples of the latter are tcbms yeah that's just like i mean there's a disagreement yeah that's your broad card yeah yeah like well i mean like arms, graph, le then, yeah. leaving arms control yeah. in the topic would open up tcbms as oh i guess it's what else what else we're doing yeah well, but yeah, yeah. Space yeah. Policy. yeah also space policy yeah space yeah. policy yeah okay. well mm -hmm. The Ned Brown yeah. doesn't really change. No, yeah, exactly. Things, though, no, so I think that's good. I'm saying, apps, yeah, like, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Additionally, there's mm -hmm. a lot in very like thorough substantive literature over whether or not soft or hard law is better for arms control. It took yeah. me about ten seconds to find a ninety-page article about the EU's proposal and why it is atrocious for arms control. So, yeah. and and the TCBMs is not bad. The the cost of reading the TCBMs app, right, mm -hmm. is one you have to deal with the unilateral counter plan. Which is just like U.S. announces a moratorium on testing that development of space TCBM. weapons. Yeah, that, that's the transparency measure. That's a T. That is. Well, but, well, you're gonna have to be transparent about it. The, the transparency that. Right. and yeah. a compass yeah. building measure. Well, then also, yeah. and then I guess too, then you deal with the unilateral counter plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Like, you just the U.S. just doesn't develop them. Yeah, but that wouldn't solve yeah. most of the asks, which are like well, like we the reason why you need competence. Yeah, it's co-op right? on space. Yeah. Yeah. Was, so <laughs> so it. it's, yeah. it's like verification yeah. slash any yeah. of that other yeah. stuff. Yeah. Okay, so if we want to do a militarization yeah. phrase, we need one. Yeah. That's it. Yes. If we don't want weaponization, then we probably want to figure out ways because I think the most generic, la last segment, if most generic phrases, international cooperation, probably do also include most of the weaponization stuff. Okay. So we want to figure out a way. We should just list the areas if we think weaponization should not be allowed because otherwise weaponization is probably allowed. I guess I mean people. Is yours advocating weaponization as a by itself topic? No, no, not at all. This okay. is like a this is like plank. Hey, hey, yeah, yeah. Like when we when we start to think about the the areas. So if we say the United States program it should increase co-op with China, if we just leave it at that, it includes weaponization. There will be weaponization right, apps. Right. No, see, I'm okay yeah, with yeah. that. I'm okay uh -huh. with. I, I was worried that we were talking about nope. just. Nope. No, no. This is like if we want to say like asteroid deflection, planets. space. You know, like moon. You know, moon exploration, Mars colonization, and then if we want to include weaponization. This is that. No, last night he was yeah. given the job of yeah. if we came up with a list and we wanted to make sure weaponization was included in the list, yeah. what phrase would we want to use? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I, I do think it's important. I feel like we have a lot of apples and oranges phrases. Yes, yeah, agreed. Strongly. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of like. I, the yeah. there, is a, there is another way to add the militarization stuff is to, to modify the cooperation to militarize space cooperation, which would, in theory, allow that without. Are you talking about in the context of the three types of space co op? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, like, if you said we, you, they should do civil and or military co Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then that still allows this without having to. Okay. I'm just saying this isn't, I don't think this is the only way to access the militarization debate. Okay. Whether yeah. you like it would be, it would be different than arms way. control, though. If you had just military co op, that's like. Whole new bag of tricks. I mean, that could yeah, be the yeah. stuff that yeah, Miles yeah. Yeah, having a small pitch for space weapons as a wording to explore rather than weaponization. I cut a lot of cards about that. Okay, we do. So I guess there are cards in here on that too. Yeah. Um, so the reason but I, but I chose. I'm, I'm with Adrian. I think we're closer to yeah. messing with how the co the an adverb for the cooperation than we are to, to adding to areas of cooperation. Areas. So okay. What yeah, type sure. of cooperation, yeah. not. Yeah. Cooperation over the X area, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. I think you need some. And so that's four. So like well, arms control modification. Well, if we 
not the other way. Well, we or we just not have. Is that what you meant by apples? I honestly, I think it's either yes or no. Yeah, I mean, like if if yes, I think we're talking about like exploration, like larger things that have stuff that this would fall under. Yes, like governance, this would fall under governance. Yeah. So so yeah, and two sub modifiers under that that. Yeah, I have lots of thoughts about this, but the uh, space sustainability is a term that people use as kind of a broader term that would include some of these space arms control measures. Uh, peaceful uses of space are terms that yeah, I've yeah. seen. Yeah, peaceful uses. Those, of space. if we want a modifier that allows military stuff, those are ones that I think are worth vetting or something similar to that. So that might be a good homework assignment for tonight. My sense is that peaceful use of space would be less limiting. I was trying to come up with a limiting one. This is the best I could do. And space sustainability deals with like yeah, debris, also less limiting debris yeah. stuff. Yeah. So. so yeah, I was just trying to think of like preserving lack counter plan, right? Okay. Um, I force the FG something. Let's move to the verbs. The right. Like I want to get the verbs stuff. Department thing. But I like to put my like. Well, you could just remove that. Sure. Three nine two. I'm still up there. Otherwise. Unilateral design. Space you know what I mean? Where, where are we? Well, that's are we on the doctor? Or we even see a T yard. So. Yeah. The so. Verb. You just said verbs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, hot, well, we have the international cooperation stuff. Mm -hmm. um, if we wanted to revisit that. Yeah, we we could, I mean, that's a, there's a decent segue to that. Do you want to talk about that? We have the stuff that you and Hester have been yeah. working those on. Those are all objects, by the way. Okay. Verbs. Okay. Increase is a verb. Cooperation is actually not a verb. Yeah. The I law one's a little different. Um, she's on the I law. So it's like nice. Touche. Okay, so this is the I law word in paper. Um, this is more like a, just like a, this is, could be a thing, but I didn't do like a ton of work to fully flesh it out, but I kind of wanted to see what people's thoughts were first. Is that um, international cooperation with space types of definition? No, it's I law word in paper. Be in the Dropbox. Day two. Yeah, I law. Yeah. I law. Yeah. Oh, not that thing. Yeah, yeah. I law word. Um, so yeah, so this one was kind of like, would there be a possibility of combining approaches in terms of thinking through the resolution, both from a sense of like, how would we guarantee an increase in cooperation, um, direct that increase in cooperation towards a specific set of activities? Um, and think about the various actors that would be involved in those activities while at the same time hopefully preserving some literature on each side. I'm not sure that this resolution does that, but it tries to do that. Um, maybe it's not big enough, a few different things. So this possible wording includes um, three different uh, treaties or agreements. So one is a treaty, two are agreements. Um, the United States is not a party to any of the agreements or treaties. So that was kind of like the first thing I started with was what are things the U.S. could, could enter into. Um, I didn't do a ton of worry work in this, like I said, because I didn't want to sink a bunch of time into this um, if people were like, ah, oh, bah, this is horrible. Uh, <laughs> um, and so the options that we had that we came up with were the PPWT, which is the Treaty on the Prevention of the Placement of Weapons in Outer Space, um, the, the Threat or Use of Force Against Outer Space Objects. Um, that's a treaty that's been proposed by Russia um, and China, um, and Slayer can answer any questions about it. Um, the second one is the International Code of Conduct for Outer Space Activities. I didn't cut any cards on this, but there's a lot of it out there. This is an EU thing. Um, the U.S. did help negotiate this one, um, where the, the U.S. has kind of sat out the PBWT, because um, Russia and China were like, hey, we should get rid of space weapons. And the U.S. was like, get right, we love space weapons. Um, and that was the end. <laughs> so the PBWT, there might be more nag on it. Um, and then the last one is the agreement governing activities of states on the moon and other celestial bodies. So that's the popularly known as the Moon Treaty. Um, I'm most, mostly focused on NEG for the Moon Treaty because I wanted to make sure there was NEG. Um, there are advocates for um, uh, signing the Moon Treaty, but are they recent advocates? Because neither of these have advocates from within like the last five years um, to do the oh at yeah, least the, in this document. The Moon one is from 2016, so uh, yeah. No, I didn't include the Moon one. Looks like from 01. No, those are NEG. Yeah. As the neg card, yeah, that was just like a fun neg card, and then the advantage kind of ones from eighteen. I was just doing like conceptual work, um, but I kind of wanted to see if, if people are like, no, this is horrible, and we should just keep with our international co-op stem. Then we just like 
keep learning how to co-op them and go back to it. I didn't want to like write a whole case neg on PPWT and write a whole app on PPWT, write a whole app on Moon Treaty, write a whole neg on Moon Treaty, write a whole app on the agreement concerning right, the activities of states, you know, okay. like write a whole neg. So I don't have three apps and three negs, <laughs> but uh, it's a concept. Yeah, I know. I actually like it a lot conceptually because it requires the app to like do something big that they're not already doing. I think the, the resolution should allow the app to do more to get the app out of this like Trump won't abide by agreements, international law stuff. You know, like allow them to do fiat implementation and stuff yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. um, we can do some more wording work. When I did consent yeah. to be bound by, there were the definitions I could, there, you could define it as ratification and implementation as one of the strongest ways you can consent to be bound by. Okay. So that does, does consent to be bound also include self-execution? Um, yeah, it, it includes a session. Um, it, yeah, so it, it doesn't like basically the congressional executive agreement counterplan isn't competitive. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Which is fine. I think we could make the resolution could be the old trees res. It's like ratify and implement. Yeah. I didn't debate treaties. I heard it was amazing. Maybe congressional executive agreements not a threatened counterplan, and we go with ratify and implement. The older folks in the room could speak to that. Farm sure, loves it. I don't know. It. You know. Like, that's a different controversy, probably, but yeah. I, mean, I just want to see <laughs> solve the advocates for the last two years that have seen that. Well, well, I guess would, if, if you uh, saw those solvency advocates and they were good, though, would you would you be interested in this resolution? Yeah. Or would okay. other people also? Because I'm like, Let's talk about I'm not looking for all of it. You know what I mean? I refer yeah. to as verbs <laughs> that other people might call action items in the resolution um, that we did some work on. Like, shove it at the ground. Um, this stuff's like, like, like people are Yeah. Oh, no, the is um, EBW is a debate about Point of information that's sure. related. Is Just there anyone in here whose yeah. library has access to space policy? Yeah, yeah. I okay. just looked something up there. What's up? Yeah, mm -hmm. cool. I, I just found there. one, a document that's really useful for what I'm going to talk about. But you know what I'm going to say? It would be nice if you yeah, to Thank you. Um, okay, so there's something called multilateral space diplomacy that Adrian has uploaded, and there's a second one called Day 2 document that Ruby put out there. Thank you, Brian. Um, so the work that I've been working on, here's the core controversy I was trying to figure out was a way to predict predictable affirmative ground that was not a list of countries so that if a couple of months from now we learn that there's a country we haven't thought of that's really important or something about the countries that we thought were important happened that changed things, we could still have a resolution. Um, but the key was to be predictable. So I started with, are there forums or mechanisms that are international space cooperation that the U.S. could act through or on? And so the wording options that I have are one that sort of identifies three of those, and that's the first wording. And the second one was something I just sort of stumbled across, United Nations treaties governing the peaceful use of outer space, and there's definition work on the kind of definitions. The UN says it has five treaties that are treaties governing the peaceful use of outer space. Um, and so I am not wedded to the language in here as much as the concept, which is the app definitely would be focused on international cooperation and it would take place in space, and it would provide some sort of predictability to the negative. So I think the predictable negative ground, and the reason why I use the term multilateral diplomacy is to create the division of ground where the negative gets bilateral, uh, not just unilateral ground um, as a way to go. <coughs> the reason why I did that was because the inherency evidence I was looking at seemed to indicate that's what the U.S. currently prefers, that NASA prefers bilateral, the Obama administration preferred bilateral. So if we declare that sort of the status quo, then the affirmative has to change from that, and the negative gets that ground to continue to defend and make tweaks within. Uh, so that's why there's a definition of multilateral diplomacy. If there was contention over that, we thought that was too limiting, the friendly amendment to get rid of that but still focus on these areas would not be a problem for me. Um, and then the evidence that I tried to divide up was just sort of the distinction that there is, a, this is a distinction between now and the status quo. Uh, the Trump administration came in and talked a bunch about space, but the leading evidence is pretty good that it's not doing multilateral space diplomacy or multilateral diplomacy on space issues. 
and neither did Bush and neither did Obama, even though they had different interpretations of what national interests were, they still, so in other words, it's inherency that's sort of solid. Um, and then a lot of people talk, a lot of the issues y'all already talked about. So if we wanna do arms control, this, these resolutions allow for that. If we wanna do space debris, these resolutions allow for that. If we wanna do SSA, these resolutions allow for that. If we wanna do commercialization or like mining asteroids, these resolutions allow for that because these, the first wording would provide a forum where you could make those arguments. The US would push for those policies. And the second wording would have <coughs> the US deal with one of those treaties one of which it has not signed on to, it has not ratified the Moon Treaty, um, but the Moon Treaty is in force. So, I tried to divide up, the one that's called Multilateral Space Policy Part One tries to divide up some harm evidence, some solvency evidence. So that's what I was shooting for. I like the idea, so the apps would look sort of like what, they cooperate, they offer, yeah, the, the app would be the U.S. should use its leadership in the, like, this use resolution number one. Mm -hmm. The U.S. would, in the U.N. conference on disarmament, promote a particular policy with regards to getting rid of ASATs or regulating ASATs or preventing the use of lasers in space, whatever it might be. The app has to win solvency. This U.S. leadership could achieve that change and that other countries would abide by it, but I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, seems to be the inherent issue of the weakness of the resolution itself is that we're asking the U.S. to do something international in nature, which is something but they don't have to do the entirety of the treaty or whatever it is. They could say we want to Yeah, place. so here's an example of that. In the second yeah. wording, the, it would be topical for the U.S. to ratify the new treaty, right? Because yeah, it hasn't that, done that, yeah. right? Uh, under the first one, it probably would not be because um, I don't think that you would go through those agencies or organizations to do that. Um, but yeah, no, the U.S. doesn't have to, the U.S. does not have to create a new treaty or sign on to something that it hasn't done before in any of those things. So the goal was predictable ground that the affirmative has to be international space cooperation, but flexibility so that when our research, which I applaud over the weekend, is found to be lacking three months into the year. We haven't boxed ourselves into a country or boxed ourselves out of a country that matters. So these resolutions allow for flexibility so when, the, when our debaters are do a much better job of researching and the depth <coughs> of the research is discovered over the course of the year, the resolution still allows the flexibility to, for that shit to be topical. That we may not have discovered what the dust app is, um, but the predictable negative ground, UN bad, multi-lat versus bilat, and then pretty much everything else that's been mentioned so far. I don't think it excludes anything that anybody says they want to debate. It just approaches it slightly differently for some flexibility. Is it topical under either resolution for the U.S. to simply propose an ASAP treaty? Yeah. yeah, in the first one, there's a topical version of that where under the U.N. Conference on Disarmament, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there's, if you look at the Libero evidence that's in the ASAT harm evidence and the solvency, that's sort of what Libero is suggesting. Right now, there's the PPWT that, and so, yes, the affirmative could be the, the U.S. alternative to that. Yeah. But just propose. That's, is that Yeah, yeah, okay. there's, I, yeah I don't think you can topically, I don't, I don't think fiat allows for more than that. Now the, I do think it's topical for the plan to take some unilateral actions as a way of showing, um, tr gaining trust for that proposal? Yeah. So I, in the stuff, I think it's, uh, I think it's actually at the top of the day two, there's a piece of evidence in there that talks about this. It's mm -hmm. from the Securing the Skies, or Securing the Skies US, UCS 2010 report. Oh, sweet. And it suggests as, not as a we should definitely need to do this, we need to explore it, the multi-lat first outside of the UN process alternative with the idea that the UN process is too cumbersome. Mm, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know if there's more than that, okay. uh, but there, so you may want to take a look at it. Definitely, the, because that's what I was kind of, wanted to, I'm, like I said, I'm not, what I'm about to say I don't have a strong opinion on, but if that creates like some very predictable negative ground, like if what you just described becomes like a good generic counterplan, I'd be fine with that. Or if modifying resolution so that that's not the obvious counterplan either way, 
Um, but I'm kind of excited that that is a debate that's going on because that's what I was hoping for with forcing. The, the reason I was listing these is the UN was okay. Then the, the negative gets to operate outside the UN. Um, you know, since that seems to be a question we're asking about everybody's wording is what's the negative going to talk about? I was trying to create a, a resolution that the negative kind of knew what that was going to be. Would reforming, like say the copulos, would that be topical? That's a good question. Like uh, something that isn't space related, right? So say copulos right now offer does offer gluten free lunch options or something like that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> there's a very there's a rather large body of work that suggests that copulos is kind of useless in its current form mm -hmm. because of like island and subcommittees and just the oh. ridiculously large amount of people that are in the committee. Um, so I'm confused about its utility as an actor in this resolution. Yeah. Um, unless like you're able to reform it, which also raises concerning questions about, I guess like, just the minutia of like, we should reform this one part about like the conference on disarmament stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I was thinking if uh, which that last part you just said about if there's literature that says that there's something about copulus now that prevents it from doing good international space cooperation. Yeah, I'm thinking that's probably more topical than the other ones since the so instead of debating about space we're debating about minute changes to calculus no no, no i was that's my point was they're not minute if they're preventing international space cooperation okay right if we have if there are articles that says right now the way calculus works is preventing us from doing good space law or good you know space cooperation i would think those might be more likely to be topical than ones that <coughs> you know the trivial one that i gave of their lunch options aren't right and I, I guess i read Stuff kind of in the middle, like they did the International Code of Conduct outside mm -hmm. of copyright because of yep. restrictions on what mm -hmm. could kind of take place within yeah. that. And so, in my mind, that kind of works, I guess, as a natural limit. Like, yeah. maybe you could read a million small acts to kind of skirt the sphere of the topic because there are very kind of specific mm -hmm. provisions. But I just kind of left without a really clear understanding of what those provisions are that made them want to do the Code of Conduct outside of copyright and then, like, what was the other one? I guess just wasn't really mm -hmm. sure. The other questions, if you look in uh, Brian's document, he has some good questions on whether US ESA counts as multi lat um, since ESA is an organization that is multiple nations. Um, I, I have kind of a bunch of, or not a bunch, but some good apps in your file that it's bilateral, it's considered bilateral. Mm -hmm. okay. is, that, is that similar? Yeah. My, I think my biggest thing, this is. I think if someone wanted to do the exact opposite of the spirit of this, which is like work with Russia, China to develop the rules of the road, they could. I mean, there's a recent Rose article, which is the thing at the bottom under example of path to exclude, that says if we brought back the space command and invited our allies to take part, um, that that would be a pretty good thing to do to contain Russia and China. It seems like that's multilateral diplomacy because we get together with our allies and invite them to cooperate on a seemingly threatening thing. And so I just, I, I was, I do think maybe like via those kind of particular <laughs> items would be enough to exclude, but if we had concern about whether it was, and if people shared the concern about this app, I did see the term kind of multilateral space diplomacy as a term of art, both within some of the weed and stuff, mm -hmm. um, but then also Rose seems to kind of speak to the difference between bilateral, and that's the one that's labeled the distinction, um, a difference between discussions that we have with individual countries or small collections of countries about you know, the challenges of multilateral diplomatic initiatives versus multilateral diplomatic engagement, the things we do kind of in those forums, kind of rules of the road generally. The only, I think, kind of problem with this, I'm not even necessarily what it's a multilateral space diplomacy, like as a solution term. You know, it itself also doesn't, you know, bring up, I think, quite as many hits as I would like, even though it seems like kind of a common topic term. I just wasn't sure if people would share the same concern that people could do multilateral things with allies that kind of skirt the spirit of, you know, multilateral space policy. Right. Um, the article that I asked, and Michaela's going to help, is called The Role of International, or excuse me, Bilateral and Multilateral Agreements in, Role of Bilateral and Multilateral Agreements in International Space Cooperation, and it's a Space Policy 2016 article. It may help with some of these okay. questions. Um, so, yeah, and also, uh, when Adrian and I were talking prior to lunch about the work we were doing and making sure we were duplicating, the idea was I would be working on some forums, and perhaps another way to envision the same resolution idea concept is 
instead of focusing on let me make the limit of forums, you could identify harm or advantage areas. And then if we really liked some term like multilateral space diplomacy or whatever it is, then the list would not be here are the air here are the forums where the US has to do it, but instead here are the uh, harm areas that it has to be done on. So um, yeah, and my thought is certainly what you lose is all the things that defy international space cooperation. But if people were concerned that that itself doesn't yeah. promote a strong limit, then you know, I'm definitely interested in continuing to work on this. Uh, like I said, I'm not. There's I'm very flexible on trying to address people's concerns. Um, I just I would like for there to be on the ballot a resolutional wording that does not limit it to countries, but does require international space cooperation in some way. Like, got to deal with some countries, but doesn't tell you who those countries are. That yeah, way it's- But it's got to be two countries. More than two. Yeah. Multilateral more than yeah. two. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But that's why we're- A bilateral counter plan is- People should be allowed to have a treasure now. Well, okay, and that's, that's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I was trying to make it, listening to the concerns, I'm hearing, what's the negative here? I'm just agreeing. I'm like, okay, well, that's a way to, that gives you a good anchor every debate. You know you can do the bilateral version instead. But if people think that's too over-limiting or too restrictive of the affirmative, yeah, friendly amendment. Um, the predictability of the organization that you have to go through actually could be a good thing, viewed as a positive of, a, hey, it's good that COPIOS has some limits to it. It's not the only mechanism in the, in the resolution. You know, you can go through others. Because um, in my mind, this kind of resolves some of the difficulty we were talking about with the proposal that Will made earlier, which is like, Russia and China do things that look dramatically different, so how do you kind of establish common wording? I feel like multilateral yeah. at least gets towards those things where Russia, China, and the US would all be acting right. in the same way with similar goals. Well, and earlier when we were talking about India, this was what I meant by this topic definitely, if the ASAT's evidence clearly is talking about India and China, and yet the negative doesn't have to worry about non-unique India cooperation because their negative ground isn't just limited to a dissat about India. You know, it's, they got more negative options than just that. So when all the thumpers about other India-US cooperation aren't really thumpers to the dissat that you're reading, um, so for the negative ground that you're going for. But I guess all the things that are being one country just become offense, like in a quick mm -hmm. different world, if you have to defend more of them, yeah. say just like US, Russia, China, kick out of Russia, kick out of yeah. China. The other thing I enjoyed as I started doing this research was it gets to something that Maggie said yesterday about the international cooperation is what where we should start and then go to space. And that's clearly where these authors are focused on. Um, is it's that's sort of where the multilateral part or the particular forums part gets us is where do we talk about space should be the focus of, or you know, with whom we talk about space should be the focus of both app and negative ground. Um, so. Like I said, I'm, I'm definitely interested in continuing working on it, willing to look into alternative wordings, would love collaboration from people who think they have suggestions the way Brian added on that document. Um, I think I was able to do this work pretty quickly, and I think that with a little bit more work, we can come up with something that we could get the topic committee consensus on. Something I think that would strengthen it would be having evidence that was comparative on doing it in the CD versus doing it outside mm -hmm. from either side. Yeah. Because the, 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 I know this mostly from the arms control side. Those folks would be happy if the US did anything that was restrictive. <laughs> and so right. I, I think maybe some of the yeah. songs cards might be more kitchen sinky mm -hmm. and having comparative targets would make it a lot better. Yeah, so two examples. So one, I originally sent uh, a list, uh, a resolution wording to Adrian that talked about the GGE on TCBMs. Um, and then realized that ended in 2014. So the UN set up this governmental group of experts, but it was it was just an ad hoc committee. They did their work and they concluded, because I originally thought that could be a forum, but it no longer exists. Now, could it be recreated? Yes, because those are clearly just ad hoc. And then the other one that I haven't included yet, but I'm trying to do some research on. So the OECD has something called the OECD Space Forum. And it lists the same basic countries, like it tells you who all it is. I'm trying to get a handle on what the hell that does, as that's a potentially a forum. So yeah, agreed. I'm, the, the ones I, that are in there now are the ones that came up on the initial list, and I noticed that they covered the harm areas we were talking about. But I continue to do searches on international organizations that do spaceship, and to see if I can find anybody else. Hospice 
starts at four. Like four, four countries. Say that again. Costco starts at. I'm gonna send you it. It's in oh, Russian, but um, it's a it's a treaty, but like a nonprofit for the U.S. It's a member. It's U.S. Russia, but I don't know the other two. Okay. It does satellite navigation stuff, but it's an international treaty organization. Yeah, one of the lists I had lists a bunch of stuff like we. There's one that's just on telecommunication satellites. There's another one that's there. The in addition to the the site that I sent that has the definition of the five treaties, that same page has the five principles, which I all almost included. And one of those was on broadcasting, like television, telecom satellites, and another one was on another one of the principles deals only with remote sensing. So in terms of predictability, it's a predictable limit, but I thought it started to cover some stuff that people might not be super psyched about. So I was like, eh, let's just stick to the treaties. Um, but that same piece of evidence, if you go to that link on that same page, it says, it's the UN Office of Outer Space Affairs, it says here's our five treaties and here are the five governing principles that the General Assembly has passed. Final question. Um, I see the the place the app could go to defend having to work via the listed institutions in restricting the behavior of maybe some more aggressive or adversarial states. Are there really good reasons why, like what, how's the app be the, do the exact same thing, talk to the same people outside the UN counter plan if they're not pursuing a restrictive action? Mm -hmm. And if there's not a way for that, should we maybe consider a wording that is basically only arms control or restrictive or punitive or whatever you want to call that. I was confused by the last part. You Sorry, said. so we can do this to the first part first. Okay. Um, yes, yes, I think we should have, I think there should be, we should consider an alternative wording that does not limit the affirmative to only UN mechanisms. Okay, um, so then the floor for that negative ground comes from, we're gonna lose the UN part and we keep the multi-lat versus bilat. Would there be any other kind of stable place for the NEG to go against maybe small or tricky app things that are multilateral? We could do it in a different forum, right? But, but he was just saying if we remove that kind of UN forum restriction mm -hmm. that the app has to meet, I, I could see weird apps that start popping up that's like talk to Italy and Chile because yeah. they happen to be really you know, oh, I guess yeah. For I guess assuming it's specified launch for pattern them, so. or whatever, yeah, like that. Yeah. Those types yeah. of apps, mm -hmm. and like forget so launching. Yeah. Like we need to talk to them about right. maybe taking another black hole picture or something yeah. like that. And that that app, that type of app, was why I started <laughs> from the, res the restrictive part of like the affirmative might come up with a cool idea, but <laughs> they're still going to have to defend some generic mechanism the negative is ready for. And yeah. ultimately, my guess is we're just going to have to make a decision as a debate community of which debate we're. Where's the lesser of two evils? I'm not, I don't think there's a perfect solution that's gonna mean the app doesn't have to defend the generic stuff, but the neg doesn't have to worry about a small app. So, so yes, yeah, so that was the second part yeah. of that first question so, that I okay, was okay. convoluted so, yes, when I explained it. Yes, it's like I think that this is solved for the versions of this that are about like more punitive uh, resolutions or more like rules of the road requirements mm -hmm. that kind of necessitate international institutions yeah. in order to in order to mean anything. So like, it wouldn't make sense to go up outside of an international institution and be like, Russia, you can't do this thing. Yes. Yeah, you can't blow shit up anymore. Yeah. So maybe considering a version of the international institutions wording that is a little bit more focused on those types of cooperative activities. Yeah, if we can find the international institutions, what Will was saying about some alternative organizations where some of that gets discussed, yeah, definitely. But you're, uh, to, I'm agreeing with you because my original thought when I was working on this was it kind of forces the affirmative to talk about, and this is what I meant about the focus on national cooperation on space policy, that's not just a, a sampler platter of these three countries have this particular advantage, but generally what can we do for space policy that affects like the multilateral or the international cooperation. I would be careful to limit at the outset too much on the app though. Like if you just add like, go, like it has to be in this forum on space weapons, then it's kind of oh, like- Oh yeah, no, the yeah, double agreement. Yeah, yeah, I just, yep. it's I just like, think we should start yeah. from the, how do we best manage the conflict between the app needs a solvency deficit to do yeah. it outside of the institution and if there's not an institution requirement, what's the next? Yeah, thing? no, I think keep That's the institution. Just the I just think keep the institution requirement, and then the bilateral, just like U.S. Russia get together across the table that doesn't include the forum, and then read your forum DA. I think yeah. that's like the coordinate ground, and that resolves the small apps. 
then it's just like, well, it's the bilateral negotiation counter plan outside the UN forum. I like to me, I, it's gonna be tough to find a small app that beats that counter plan. Yeah. At least conceptually, I don't know. Right, but that counter plan has difficult time dealing with the big apps. Yeah. Oh, agreed. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's the debate, that's right? It's just like, yeah, yeah. The idea behind this resolution yeah. is it yeah. kind of funnels the the core yeah. debates yeah. into what are big space things, yeah. and that was why. When I was reading the Whedon, the, the, the evidence from Whedon that's in my part one is sort of what got me thinking about this is because there's been such a dearth. The U.S. doesn't show up to these forums to push for anything anymore, yeah. and it's allowing other people to define the terms. And so there's, on these large space policy issues, there's a lack of international space cooperation in the way the U.S. wants. And so that's the, the core controversy as envisioned by this resolution is that. The yeah, like US the U.S. leads policy. a multilateral yeah. effort, yeah, rather exactly. than continues with our unilateral exactly. efforts. Yeah. So that's, that's the gist behind this. I think that the work that Michaela and Adrian are going to present is provides that other side of it. Uh, no, Michaela. Oh, <laughs> um, okay, there are, we may want to take 10 minutes to look at these before we talk about them because there's multiple. There's some stuff that DCH did, there's some stuff that Daniela and I did, there's some stuff that Herndon did. Um, there's also a separate PDF that one of them refers to because there's like a page long chart that I was not about to try to copy and format into a Word document. Uh. Um, so these are all in the day two folder, and if you sort it alphabetically, mm -hmm. I believe it, they're all clustered in the G. Governance, global space governance. Yeah, yeah. Give me one second, sorry. I'm Yes. Okay. So the PDF one, Global Space Governance, is the one that has a chart that will be referred to in the stuff that Danielle and I did. I will start with the stuff Danielle and I did, then look at the Herndon stuff, then the DCH stuff. I'm sorry, I don't have the link in front of me, but I was going to type up over here. You know, saying what they are. Uh, it's just like a governance work. Space governance, Herndon, second. Governance cards, DCH, third. And there's a PDF called Global Space Governance that's the executive summary that gets referenced. There's a couple of sections of that that get referenced that would be easier to look at.
do you see it? Do you see the this? These <laughs> take your words. <laughs> Could some version of barriers or restrictions play well with this, these terms? Sure, we could do. I think this is super broad. I think we could have other. We could have other floors. We could take out exploration and development and just say governance. Mm -hmm. I, I literally think governance covers every app we have mentioned at some point. I agree. Like, because part of how I got to governance was I was trying to decide. I was thinking along Patrick's lines of military and um, civilian, and I couldn't decide what I thought asteroids was. <laughs> because it's kind of civilian, but I guess it's a planetary defense, so maybe it's also military. And so I started looking around, and that's when I stumbled across a planetary defense article that was also talking about governance, and I started to realize that this was a term of art. And there does seem to be some def like, there's a lot of agreement about what governance is. The problem is it probably covers just about everything, which is why I think cooperation in governance, and then we could also, we could tack on more specific areas if we wanted to. We could say governance about space exploration. We could say governance about weaponization, astroplanetary defense, ISS. I, we could, it's got a lot of potential. I just think that a good, I, I really feel like in the end, this is, had the paper hit on this phrase sooner, this is what we have started the weekend talking about, because I think this is, this captures and it's a huge part of what the debate is internationally. It's a huge part of why the U.S. needs to be doing international co-op, is that there's all these things. It deals with commercialization. It deals with militarization. It deals with a whole lot of stuff. And, so, and the fact that there are, I realize looking at this, it may seem like, oh, my God, this is so unlimiting. And I trust me, I appreciate that. Um, but I do think, for instance, the Stelmach card, um, which is from a slide, which, which is from a series of slides, which is why it reads a little bit disjointed, but um, there is more, and that executive summary, and there's a whole damn, that executive summary is just the executive summary of a whole damn book, um, that there are, there is a lot more detail. I also don't think that as many, for as many apps as you think this might allow, let's be real, they're not all going to solve, nobody's going to say yes to all of these. Globe, I do like the idea that this kind of forces a serious effort at global governance in that, like, for it to be global, people, like, more than, it, I think it may, I don't think it necessarily requires <coughs> multilateral, but in order for some of these things to get real advantages, there probably have to be a lot of people that are following along or cooperating with it, so I think the NAG still has plenty of say no ground and things like that. Um, but it just seemed like we were struck. We've been struggling to figure out how to describe apples and oranges and fit them all into the same topic. This might be a way to capture a bunch of them. I'm not necessarily thrilled with. Like I threw some versions of wordings down at the bottom. I'm not especially wedded. To, I was just trying to figure out how to make it as narrow as possible, but like capture all the apps everybody sure. wanted. Sure. It. And throw out the reminder: unilateral counter plan solves a bunch. Right, like all of those filters we talked about at the beginning right. will really limit the app down. Yeah, I, yeah. I just like that I feel like we found some, but like between the McGill people, uh, well, it's I guess it's mostly McGill people, but there are some other sources floating around, and there's a lot of McGill people. Um, <laughs> there was a very big working group on this. Um, that there does seem to be some degree of consensus about what some of the baseline things about these are. Yeah, I mean, my, my thought was that there's a UN workshop on space yeah. in 2016, where they're like, global space governance refers to, and it's like the right. same list mm -hmm. that they did. Um, but I mean, it is everything. It's, yeah. it's treaties, institutions, mechanisms, agreements, regulations, rules of the road. You know, I do think, like, the end of that still muck card said the in other words section <coughs> is that there's a move to integrate lots of countries into it, that it's the process of uh, creating regulations, et cetera, for a global scale. So it should limit out some of the small apps that wouldn't really be a global thing, uh, that it tends to involve institutionalization. I think gives the NAG some room to say, you know, the better interpretation or the more limiting interpretation should be that it has to be institutional. So I do think that there's, I think there are some limiting factors to this. 
Um, and I think, and the fact that it's something concrete to work with, as opposed to a lot of our other definitions, which were much more amorphous. Can I ask you a quick question about the Spellmock card that says it's distinct from past ability and interoperability and development? Um, I know this is just a really basic question, but I'm just being less familiar with it. Can you just help flesh out a little bit of like why or what else that might potentially do? Like what's the kind of? I thought it might, step capacity building, I thought was probably like helping, it, well that was the one that was like strengthening national space infrastructure. So okay. it wouldn't be governance to help somebody build a launch capability. Got you. But it might be governance to tell them what they can do once they're in space and stuff like that. Like that's not capacity or infrastructure -y. Um, some of these, this was in a, this was in a slide that was not just, like it was kind of describing how this also fit into a larger sustainable development agenda and stuff like that. So not all of this was, like I don't think resiliency uh, was about space um, in that list, but the fact that governance about space and interoperability and capacity building um, were listed kind of separately, that was why I thought so like for example, like a critical path towards development of new space technology, probably not the end of this, but governance regarding how to deal with the existing capacities and things like that is maybe? I think maybe, okay. yes. I had not thought about it at all in terms of critical path, but that sounds like a possible distinction. Okay. Yeah, I just started thinking about it because like infrastructure building is like a component of Development and exploration needed. I don't. I don't think so, necessarily. I this was. I left them that way because I wanted people to tell me if they thought like if we took them out, are we losing something? Is there an app that we've talked about that doesn't get covered if we just say increase its cooperation in the area of I don't know, whatever my McBroad one said? Mm -hmm. um, increase international space cooperation. In space governance collaboration I don't know. They're in the area of global space. Would like in the, area the area repeal wolf area. BT? No. Ask to like do a thing with China that repeals yes. wolf. Yeah. yeah. You would have to repeal wolf and It'd be or, exactly. okay. or get a waiver. Yeah, or a waiver. Yeah. But yeah. Or waive whatever cooperation it wolf could stay in the box. Well you can't get a waiver for military stuff. You couldn't do Defense to defense. You can only get waivers for civil. You're saying that's how the Wolf Amendment operates? Yeah, the Wolf Amendment prohibits military to military cooperation. Yeah. Okay. It allows for waivers for civil cooperation. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I mean, that UN workshop on space says that global space government includes the processes of that encompass instruments, mechanisms for codes of conduct, guidelines for confidence building measures. Seems like getting rid of the Wolf Amendment would, would be, be yeah. uh, both a code of conduct and a confidence building measure, right? Like, code of conduct is great, we can. I think it would be a CM, I don't know, but that's okay. code of conduct. Maybe just a guideline then. Table of contents list that's in the like that's the same document that's the same PDF that is referred to. You could certainly poke your head into back into that document to see if any of those in particular. I just it was taking too long and there was too much weird formatting in the PDF that that's why I just copied the table of contents and referred you to the charts and stuff like that. But I would imagine some of the things about sharing science and research and stuff like that would probably, given that those are considered to be part of governance, I would think that would facilitate reducing wolf restrictions or things like that. And I can do more work on this in a 
again, I'm also not wedded to this, so if everybody, if, if anybody doesn't like this, <coughs> if there's a, something particularly damning. Uh, how does it overlap with what Hester, like, are they, <coughs> is yours a compass? I, I don't think they're mutually exclusive. Okay. Uh, I think my version doesn't force us to be, doesn't force us to be several countries. I think mm -hmm. you could yep. be still just China, or you, okay. could, you could be just one country from the get-go, but you could be more countries if you wanted to. Yeah, you might want to, it would, if it's just one country or two, you might say, like, at least including right. the global, global states governments, rather than, like, you know, with one or more of the following. Then you can do multilateral things. The hot one really all want to work fun. So, given what we've talked about, mm -hmm. do you think we could get a slightly edited version of the broad, broad, mm -hmm. broad, broad version? Yeah. No, I was going to say this might be a type of. Gotcha. I'm gonna send it. <laughs> I mean, <coughs> so you can put it in the Google Doc. I just want to make sure that people are cool. Whatever. I tried to break down what we seem to be thinking about. Uh, I guess I could just put it. Yeah, I just sent that out. Good work, Patrick. Try sometime. Come <coughs> on, make it a little smaller. I mean, it, it seems to kind of, if there's something that uh, is missing on there, but that seems to be, there's kind of like five broad categories, although some of them are similar to others, like one and two is co-op with countries, and then it's co-op with countries uh, for ceiling, um, or sorry, the co-op with countries over certain areas, right? Um, hey, let's take a 10-minute break, let people, like, stretch. I'll keep this up here, if people can look at it, think about what it is up here. If you think there's something that we're missing, then you should probably figure it out sooner than later. Cool. I figured it out, sorry. <laughs> I was like, nobody actually, I didn't invite anybody by the way. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> 